All right, so this video was actually inspired. I actually, I watch Kevin Samuels. Kevin Samuels is a, a YouTuber. He does primarily for the black community in terms of getting women. Uh, he often talks about how, you know, the very low marriage rate among black women, and it's three out of four women end up being single. So he's primarily, from my perspective as a Latino, he's primary for his own people, which is perfectly fine. I would say that that's great. It's good to have people in your community that can kind of re-educate and bring you back to what is considered more of a social norm for the purpose of benefiting your community. And then I came across, um, so I watched the original of this young lady talking with Kevin Samuels. And then I came across someone else who I do follow, which is uh, Mediocre Tutorial Reviews. And reviews and he came and he did a, a, re, a video review of her discussion about how she changed her life to get the man that she wants etc and i was kind of disappointed when i watched his review because his review is more like a co-signing of her like her story but if you actually listen to her story which we're going to briefly go through there are tons of red flags within this young woman's uh basically given her her story, her, what do they call them? I forget. Testimonial, right? This is her testimonial of, you know, I followed this individual's advice and I snagged the individual that I was looking for. But this is from the standpoint of, from men, right? This is from the standpoint of men <clears throat> to beware, to beware of those who tell you just what you want to hear. And of course, I always like to bring in, because this always comes full circle. Growing up as a youth in the church, I always remember Bible principles, and again, principles are designed to give you like, it's not a rule, it's not a law, it's something that you can use and has multiple applications. And so Jude said to be on watch from the congregation, he says, for certain men have crept in among you unnoticed. And this, of course, is the point, is that some individuals who come in to the manosphere are individuals who have crept into the manosphere they just tell you what you want to hear for the purpose of using you it's very important we're going to listen to her own words she says she basically tells on herself right in the very beginning as someone who has definitely been getting a lot of traction recently i actually found out about him when he was still at like under 100k subscribers well, she's talking about kevin Samuel. a man i was dating at the time told me about him and i started learning more about the manosphere on youtube and learning more about different positions that men have so anyway when um the gentleman i was dating previously put me on kevin samuels i will say initially i was taken aback as someone who i I believe in very pro-woman. I love women. I appreciate women, especially us black women. I um, definitely am somebody who has a big heart for other women. I was like, this man is so rude. <laughs> like so this is very important to understand that this is the base that she came into in <clears throat> Kevin Samuel's, uh, you know, and basically into his world, right? So basically in listening to his podcast, the videos that he does, he talks often with, with black women or just primarily with women in general. And as she said, just hearing her out, she, from the very beginning of where her standpoint, where her premises, her background, she is a feminist, 100%. Anybody who tells you that I'm pro woman, you know, anybody that's like, I'm pro whatever my race is or whatever my gender is, that would be like me, I'm, I'm pro Latino, I'm pro man, etc. It's a comment that doesn't mean anything, right? It's like, I'm human, I'm pro-human. It really doesn't it really doesn't mean anything when, when a person, of course, uh, says anything that's like that. You're just basically pushing for your particular people, whether or not you're necessarily right or wrong. And of course, you listen to more about what she says, and she goes a little in-depth. You'll hear a lot of red flags that very much indicate that she is a feminist at heart who is crept into the manosphere for the purpose of attaching herself to a man. Having discussions with an actual man who was well within the financial bracket that Kevin Samuels talks about, it was really interesting to see how differently we as men and women think and how we go about dating. And how- Now, what she's talking about here is that prior to her getting engaged, right? She was dating some other dude that put her on to Kevin Samuels, right? And as she stated previously that that person was of the sort that Kim and Samuels talks about, the high value male, the you know well-dressed man, the person who 
is busy on his grind, etc. Right? He's tall, dark, handsome. Er, you know, basically everything that vast majority of women talk about that they want. <clears throat> and so, previously in her previous relationship, she obviously could not land that man. So he either dipped on her, cut, you know, set her back out on the streets, and then she eventually meets another guy that she talks about very briefly. Sometimes if you as a woman don't understand the perspective of men, you kind of sell yourself short or put yourself at a disadvantage because you're not navigating the dating marketplace with a mind that is conducive for getting the kind of results that you want. And, and this is important because for young women like this, more than likely as you're listening to her testimonial, it doesn't sound like she was a young woman who grew up with the father figure that most men would look for. You would look for a woman who grew up with a family, who grew up with a father, so that that father then spent years, right, all of her youth, 10, 11, 12, into her teenage years, where those are the rough patches for many young people, navigating, helping them navigate through those years so that they then grow up, they're a mature individual, and of course he can then present her to the marketplace and say that my daughter is ready for marriage. Instead, this is a woman who is, in essence, seeking another father figure in Kevin Samuels to basically redirect her into the right direction because she has completely been misled into what she, you know, the whole feminist ideology. And so that's why, that's why when you hear her and she says, when I first heard of what he was talking about, it didn't sit well with her, right? That lets me know that either she didn't grow up with a father or she did not grow up with a father figure that teaches young women how to be traditional so that they can go off and then find a high value man so that they can get married and have a family. And that's what I found interesting about Kevin Samuel's platform. So although um, what he has to say might not be the easiest for a lot of people to hear, but I did believe and I do believe that there's a lot of truth and there's a lot of validity to the things he is saying. First up on the topic of femininity that Mr. Samuels discusses, I think it's such an important and underrated thing that is being lost in just the culture of today. I truly believe, do you? Like, that's my life philosophy, do you? But if you want a certain- As you can see, like I said, her, her base sort of where she comes from is feminist. The very first topic that she talks about, about femininity, being something that is undervalued, it's something even her personally, she talks about that. Uh, that whole concept of being feminine, submissive, all that stuff is something that you typically don't necessarily see in women. And for a lot of these young women, they're learning it later in life, right? This is a young woman, she, I think she's in her early 20s. And so she's learning this, of course, from a secondhand individual. You know, she, she didn't grow up. She didn't grow up and see her mom being submissive to her father. And then realize, okay, this is the route that I'm supposed to go because this is what you, you this is what you grew up and see within your own household. So most people react to or live their way in a way that reflects typically either what they've seen within their own household or they completely do a 180 from their household. And maybe they're like, my family live this lawless lifestyle. I'm going to go off in this direction and go via the church lifestyle. Or maybe you have someone who had a, a family background that was very much like a church atmosphere and they just went, I'm gonna go this way and do a 180 and I'm gonna live a life of fornication and drugs and alcoholism, et cetera, et cetera. But outside of the spectrums, most people live in conjunction with the way that they were raised. So for her talking about that these topics show that there's something that were, she was not raised to be this way an outcome and if you want um, a certain result in your life you're going to have to get in line and play the game that needs to be played in order to get that and that you hear that you need to play the game that needs to be played in order to get that it's not that the individuals are doing it this way because they realize that this is the right way the moral way the way that uh the way that of course helps to build thriving families and thriving societies. It's like, no, you're playing the game. If you want to get that high value man, if you want to get a man who has a lot of money, then you've got to, you've got to play the way that they expect you to, to act in a certain way. That's why I say you have to be very careful. Uh, as, as the Bible said, right? When it comes into the manosphere, when it comes into people telling you what you want to hear, you got to be very careful because there are going to be women who will creep in 
to the manosphere that are there for their own personal desires or for their own personal pleasure. That's just the truth. And so in the topic of high value men that Mr. Samuels discusses, these are a certain caliber of men who have certain qualities that they look for in a woman. It's not possible, or I would say it's not as possible to be able to play that game and win if you choose to be the girl that's out here doing things that they might not be too <laughs> inclined to want to entertain or anything. And, and so when they <clears throat> Basically, what she's saying is if you're being a thought, you have no chance at getting a high value man. So you need to play the game accordingly. The topic of femininity. But she's just saying it in a nice way. Comes up. If you're a traditional minded woman and want a traditional minded man who is an alpha man, who's a provider minded man and things of that nature, it's just the game you're going to have to play. And it's something that I enjoy playing. I love being a feminine woman. I love being able to exude femininity and really sit in my femininity and allow it to work for me in my life. And I think it's such an important. Did you hear that? Did you hear that point that she just made? We're going to roll it back. All right, we're going to roll it back. I love being a feminine woman. I love being able to exude femininity and really sit in my femininity and allow it to work for me in my life. And I think it's very important to keep that in mind. We're not, I'm not going to go into it, but later on, she makes a point which we'll go into. But again, this is this, these are the people that you're dealing with. I think with. it's such an important quality and definitely something I'm going to pass down to my children. And I think it's something that you shouldn't be ashamed of indulging in and taking full advantage of. Take and full advantage of your female femininity. That sounds very much like the feminist of today, no? Now, in regards to the feminism movement and things of that nature and the idea of the modern woman and stuff, my personal opinion, I choose not to identify as a feminist. Just um, being a black woman and understanding the history of that. Now, you can choose not to identify and say I'm a feminist, but still continue to espouse the tenets of feminism, which is one of them, which is what she talked about, about using your femininity basically to to your benefit, right? And basically chalking it up to the game. Later on in the video, she talks about how uh, I agree with the female wage gap. The female wage gap has been debunked, like, I don't know how many dozens of times, but yet that isn't a tenant of that is espoused by feminists. She, of course, will then she, she, of course, talks about her career. that She's a, a female with a career. She's very career driven. Again, a very much modern feminist in her ideology. She talks about what women deserve, right? Versus about like we're from the male standpoint where you have to go out and earn things. She, in her video, she talks about how um, the man, she wanted the man who would give her the ring that she deserves. She had to find a man who made enough money to get the ring that she says that she deserved. And of course, whenever you come across a woman who has the mindset of this is what we deserve as a person, as a group, as a culture, you know, instead of this is what we've worked for, right? It's a very different. This is what we worked for. This is what we have earned because of our hard work, because of our labor. And of course, those are individuals that you want to stay clear from because as men, we have to go out and work hard. As she said, right? She talked about how the man has to go out and earn a hard living. He doesn't want to come home and have to deal, you know, with another battle when he gets home. And so from the, she understands it from the male standpoint, but it's not, it's something that is non-existent from the female standpoint. It's something that, you know, you use your femininity to get what you need in life, et cetera, or you, and you use it to get the type of man that you want so that you can get the resources that you want out of life. Movement. I know it's not something that was created with the intentions of serving women like me. And so it's just not something I choose to agree with. I am pro women. I believe women should have equal rights um, in terms of pay gap health care and things of that nature i believe that we as women deserve all of those things we deserve it all right we deserve it all you don't have to work for anything you don't have to work for anything but you just deserve it all right so <laughs> literally out of the same mouth that she just said i'm not a feminist she turned around and espouses everything that feminists talk about I'm not talking about feminism in that sense. Now, in regards <laughs> to dating and um, the dating marketplace, I do think that, yes, we as men and women are equal, but there are certain qualities that we... And then this is just uh, mental gymnastics. She just goes through a series of mental gymnastics where the moment you talk about 
that men and women are equal, but yet men do the overwhelmingly lion's share of bringing home resources, keeping the establishment in terms of whatever city or neighborhood that you live in overwhelmingly is of course held up and created and basically held up by men. So to sit here and to state that men and women are equal as if you, you, you're you equally bringing you know, a lion's share to the table in terms of keeping things moving forward is just not true. And again, these are many of the tenets of of the feminist movement is to actually sit here and pretend that you're equal to a man that isn't what uh that isn't what obviously not what the bible says even though of course the bible says that you know um you know god made women out of adam's rib but at the same time men were still responsible overwhelmingly uh for for the family and for even just for that little garden that they had who was the first person that God went to. Did he go to Eve, even though she was the first person, to, she was the first person to commit a sin? No, he went right to Adam. He went right to Adam and he said, what's going on? Right? Because you are responsible. You were responsible for the garden. You were responsible for the animals. You were responsible for your wife. And he said, what's going on? Why are you, what did you do? You did something wrong. But of course, in modern day feminism, this is a sort of rhetoric that they teach that men and women were equal, interchangeable, etc. We all bring equally uh, to the table, as they say. Each have. We're equal, but we're not the same. And I think that is an important distinction for us to really understand. And I will speak for myself, and these are the values that I have. Yes, I'm equal to my man, but there are certain qualities that he has that I can't even... She is equal to her man. ...try to touch. And there are qualities that I have that he just doesn't. So we complement each other really well. I'm not vying with my man and competing with my man in areas that I know are for him to excel in. And that's just what it is. I stay in my lane and he stays in his. And I feel like for me and the mindset that I have in regards to dating, that's what works best. And so where the idea of like certain feminist ideologies can come into play and be um, a hindrance to the progression or the quality of a relationship is when you bring in that mindset and it causes you to now go head to head with your spouse. I believe as a man, you're the head of the household. If I'm looking on to you to provide, to be a father figure, to be a leader in the household, there's responsibilities that come with that. But in order to lead in that position, I as a woman have to be able to submit to his authority in that arena not did you, did you hear what she said she said that as the man you're responsible for leadership you're responsible for to provide for the household etc and then she said that there are certain responsibilities that come with that but what she didn't say was that as a result of being responsible for bringing in resources as a result of being a man who is responsible and who is a leader that that comes with of course the privilege of having the right to be the leader of the household, right? So it's from the standpoint of, well, if you want me to do this, well, then you have to be all of these things. Otherwise, you're not, you're not the head of the household. Very important, very important to weigh the, the mindset of the individuals and how they try to twist male leadership and masculinity and the patriarchy sort of uh, family headship that has existed for thousands and thousands and thousands of years that have brought us to where we are today. Not saying that as a woman you're now just this second class citizen and you're just a slave or whatever. The you see, you can not, and then of course you see the very stark contrast, right? It's it's the man is the leader, but the viewpoint is that well, if the man is the leader of the household, the woman is looked at as a the woman is looked at as a slave, and of course we don't have to take that viewpoint. But that's the sort of rhetoric that you have to deal with with the feminist mindset is that. If you allow your man to be the head of the household, well, then the result is that the woman is a slave and, you know, she's second class, etc. Which is why many women address it this way, because that's the way that it has been taught to many women. That if you follow the patriarchy and you're a woman who wants to have a family, you're a woman that wants to have, you know, you want to have children, you want uh, to be a stay-at-home mother, you are looked at as if you are a slave. Men never looked at women, men never looked at women that way and men were never taught to look at women that way, if, if, especially you look back into the early 1900s, overwhelmingly, even within the black community, it was a church going community. Most of these individuals, you saw them, they were always in their Sunday best, always dressed with slacks and a nice t-shirt and a nice shirt, like if, like as if they were going to church. Some most older men wore a hat and a blazer and you saw most women were covered up, right?
They were fully covered up as if they were always dressed very nicely, very fashionably, like as if they were going to a ball or they were going to they were going to church. Why? Because that was the era. That was the way things were. Most people overwhelmingly were church going individuals. And so, of course, that was based off of the Bible. Most of those qualities were based off of were based off of the Bible. And overwhelmingly, you hear scriptures about for men to be like Christ who sacrificed himself for the church. And then the Bible says, be like that. Be like that in terms of your wife, right? It talks about uh, loving your wife and doing, thing, doing things for your wife, being faithful to your wife. Don't forget your wife just because she has now grown old and hit the wall and she doesn't look as beautiful as those young 19, eight, you know, 18, 19, 20 year olds. It says don't abandon your wife just to go out there and, uh, and find another young woman. Overwhelmingly, the Bible has always taught men to look out for women. James talked about that the, the standpoint of all of, of a whole purpose of serving God is to what? Look out for widows and to look out for orphans, look out for those who basically are disadvantaged. The thing is, a feminine woman understands her power and understands that in any situation, you have the ability to persuade. You know how to talk to your man. You know how to get the outcomes that you want, but you do it in a feminine manner. It's not aggressive. It's not combative. It's not. She's just basically talking about female manipulation. You trying to go tit for tat with roles and position and power in the relationship, but there is a feminine way and a feminine manner to achieve that outcome, and that's how I believe traditional relationships work best. And that's basically what uh, feminists have taught people. Like she said in the beginning, use your femininity, use your femininity to your advantage. Uh, but the power, uh, the, the the pay gap. I believe in pay gap. I believe women deserve X, Y, and Z. Right? And it's not that you've earned it. It's not that you've gone out there and you've worked hard and you've slaved for it. And now you basically have earned all of these things that you think that you deserve. And then, of course, when you need to, don't be afraid to manipulate a man via your sexual energy. Now, in regards to career, um, Kevin Samuels definitely talks about this a lot. Career women. I recently, well, I'm still in the middle of reading it. I'm gonna skip <laughs> but ahead a little bit. Um, I will say also that he makes the point that it's like sometimes we as women put dating on the back burner and don't put as much intention and seriousness into it as we put into our degrees, into our education, into our careers. And that's a problem. There's a certain level of effort that it comes with in terms of making sure that you're at your and I would say the reason that you see that is the case of black women having to put their careers ahead is because overwhelmingly, when you look back in history, like in the 70s, where, of course, the black community and the black family was targeted via individuals like Joe Biden and the crime bill that overwhelmingly put black men in jail. And as a result of that, you had no male leadership. And so what happens is within the black community, because of a lack of male leadership, because many of these men, unfortunately, were getting themselves caught up into crime, especially during that era uh, of the 70s and 80s and the crack is whack that impacted blacks more than other, uh, other, other cultures. And so that's been, unfortunately, the history um, when you look prior to that, you saw very much intact black families, you know, it, like I said, it, most of these individuals, you know, when you look back, even during times of slavery, overwhelmingly black families were uh, together, male, you know, husband and father and children. And it wasn't until later on in life, even into the 60s, where, of course, the attack on black families, the introduction of feminism, um, the introduction of the welfare state that heavily impacts families. And that was the whole purpose. It's tried out on a small group and then it gets expanded out to other groups. It was originally tried out and sought out on the black community. It worked and then it expanded into minorities and then eventually crept its way into white America. And, and of course, for, it's for the purpose of destabilizing families, because from the governmental standpoint, it's much easier to manipulate women when you can separate the men, when you can separate the men from the relationships where you have typically men who are rational, who use their, they use their brain, right? They typically view things based off of, of, of off of merit. It's much harder to manipulate that family and say, well, this is what you deserve. This is what I can give you. When from a male standpoint, you're not worried about what someone can give you. You want your freedom, right? You want your freedom. You value your freedom to be able to move about, to be able to navigate the marketplace, to be able to bring resources to home. Women typically value resources. And so it's hard to manipulate women and say, we can give you resources when there's already a man in the house who can bring home resources. They won't look at it as of any value. But now if you've, if you've removed the male from the family unit, 
now the female is much harder because women don't have necessarily you know in essence what it takes to go out and as a whole to garner the resources that are necessary for creating stable families and so this was a governmental tactic basically to destroy the, to destroy the family and of course as a result we see you know the impact of that your best self whether that's losing which weight. is why which is the point was which is why you see in the black in the black communities where women feel that they have to get their careers and they have to get their job because they have to go out there and they have to earn a living for their families you have overwhelmingly you know single motherhood within the community and so as a result of that you have now women who are basically forced to be the man and the woman within the family and try to navigate that dynamic for the rest of their life because as a result of what happened in previous generations now you have basically a rift created between the black community where there's no longer you know um you know men who are driven to go out and provide for their families and then look for women to create to create families to have a, to create stable families which causes cre um stable communities and of course overwhelmingly the government does not want uh, a, st a stable black community hey. one point that i did want to bring out is where she talks about the type of men that she has been attracting and like anything in life you attract what you are right if you're a high value male you are more than likely going to attract uh, a higher quality of women that doesn't mean that you're not going to attract lower quality women but overwhelmingly you, you would be able to filter those individuals out most of the time those individuals will leave you alone because they know that they're not even on your level and I would say it's the same thing when it comes to when being a woman. If you're a very attractive woman, yes, you are gonna uh, you are gonna come across men who maybe are not in your range, so to say, um, in terms of relationships. And of course, that she brings she makes so that. So I'm that, sitting that same here point. upset at the fact that I'm attracting really subpar men who are hurting me. It's like I have to take a minute and step back and see why am I attracting this? Not only so this is important, right? So. It's, there's there's a difference between attracting certain types and then dating certain types, right? So just because I come across, I mean, I do, I have, I have that happen all the time at the hospital. You have these very low quality women that I have absolutely no interest in, and of, and of course they express some sort of interest. You know, they try to talk to you, they stare at you in the hallways, right? The things that tip, that women typically do to show that they're interested in. Um, but it doesn't mean that I'm going to get involved with these people. It doesn't mean I'm going to establish a relationship. With these people I, I would want to vet the person out before i even went out on a, on a date with such individuals but she's talking about that she gets into relationships as she says and these individuals hurt her it's very important to understand that yes as an as a woman you're, you're and if you're a high valued woman yes will men who are basically not on your level be attracted to you sure but you should be able to filter those men out very quickly in no way shape or form if you are a high valued woman should you be dating such individuals who are beneath you? Not only why am I attracting this, you can attract whatever you attract, but why am I allowing this to remain in my life? Why am I having relationships with this, these type of men? See, and again, this goes back to my original premise when I stated that more than likely she did not grow up with a father figure or a strong male father figure because your father would be there like, who the hell is knocking on my door to come pick up my daughter? Right. And so since since she did not grow up in that environment, this is why she is ex experiencing all the troubles of navigating the dating market, because a man to a young woman growing up, that is the model. Right. The father is the model. I saw how my father moved. He was a hard worker. He respected and he loved my mother. He was always there. He led the family. Right. So since she never saw that, she doesn't she doesn't know um, how to pick. How to pick a man because there was no male in her life growing up that gave her the direction there was no example for her to follow and be like okay this is how my father was and that's the sort of man women do this by nature you go especially within the white community a lot of these young white women they typically look for these high value men because overwhelmingly their fathers were that way and so they see the fathers who were business oriented who were entrepreneurs or, or who who pushed for uh, positions within the company etc and we're able to bring home the bacon as they say or provide for their families and so by nature just just by seeing observable reality they were able to witness okay this is what they, this is what they're going to look for it's just it's just it just happens by nature because children learn by what they see more than by what they by what you by what you try to teach for, she talks about 
marriage and when i hear her reaction or when i hear her recount and again i think she's like 23 <laughs> she's like 23 years old and when i hear her state this <laughs> when i met my now fiance i was in a headspace where it was like i had given up on love like i really wasn't looking is but my man really when i when i hear stuff like this it makes me feel like how many people have you dated that you're at the point where you've given up on love like when i hear stuff like that i just think you must have been ran through really shifted my perspective on that before my man even saw me and we had our first phone call he was like look i am dating intentionally i am not and this is something that i really this is probably the first point that i should have led with right so as a man marriage is your last journey or your last it's usually like an ultimatum the woman that you're with is probably telling you that she wants to get married or else and at that point you have to be like all right bye but i'm just saying like typically when you look back at history women literally had to drag men to the altar and so for you as a man to go out there and to just automatically tell on yourself that this is what you're looking for it's not necessarily the wisest move because again you never know what sort of person who has crept into your life and they may just tell you the things that you want to hear and you will be misled and this man sounds like the sort and we'll listen to her testimonial of him out here trying to play games i'm not out here trying to waste your time or my time for that matter and so this is you know he set the tone for the relationship from the get-go from the first time i ever heard his voice and so for me as a woman it went me into shape because it was like look you're not dealing with one of these dudes you've been dealing with before out here you got to whip yourself into shape or this and she just told on herself right there this man will quickly drop you because he's not here for the games and stuff and so by the second day my man and i were exclusive he was like look did you hear that I don't know what else you got going on, but I want us to be exclusive. And when I tell you I cut off everybody else, remove them off of social media, pass. I, I don't believe that one bit, but this is more important. This is more telling about the type of man that she that she basically found. He may he may have be he might be somebody who can bring home a check and bring home a decent salary. But in terms of going out there and, and meeting women, for me, this young lady is, as Kevin Samuel says, average at best. For me to go out there and meet someone and on the second date, be like, we're exclusive and I, it's not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. I mean, shoot, for, I work typically 60 hours a week at the hospital. I pull typically five 12 hour shifts on the regular. Now I do a little bit more. So I'm typically doing like 20 to 23 shifts from last month and this month. On top of that, when I come home Monday to Friday, for those that don't know, as you can see, I'm getting ready for the stock market to open. I've been up since about four o'clock in the morning. I had a nice 12 hour sleep because when I came home yesterday from the hospital, when I came home yesterday from the hospital, since I'm off Thursday and Friday, I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna stay up all day. After I did my 12 hour shift, I stayed up all day watching the stock market, trading the stock market, working on my long term, working on my short term, working on my swing trades, because that was my goal. My goal is to increase the amount of money that I can bring home. The type of woman that would have to come into my life on a second date, like, please, I'm working like just, just 60 hours and probably pulling in, pulling in, I don't know, 80 hours a week or more of work. The type of woman, like she don't even exist for me to be like, we're going to be dating and exclusive on a, say, on a second date, especially because I've dated so many women, especially now being 41, like I've ran through hundreds of women. It's just not going to happen. And so this just tells me of the type of individual that she came into contact with. Yes, how my proposal happened was a surprise to me. But the fact and then they got they got engaged like five or six months after having their first date. And it's like, you got to be kidding me. Like it just it just wouldn't even happen. It just wouldn't even happen. Like realistically speaking, it just wouldn't happen. Especially not in the West. Especially not in the West. I don't even date in the West. This shit ain't even worth it because most of these chicks are ran through. Like this young woman right here, she she told on herself that most of the men that she came through were just guys that hurt. She's literally ran through at twenty something years old, at twenty three years old. You can hear just in her own testimony that she's a ran through chick. And this guy is sitting here. He doesn't even know 
what he has in front of him. And he proposed to this woman, became exclusive with her woman, with this woman, basically after after the second date. And this just goes to show you. And then, of course, later on in her testimony, we're going to keep this. I'm going to wrap this up right here. Later on in her, in her testimony, she talks about her career. Her goal is to be a lawyer, right? She wants to be a family woman with two kids, and she wants to be a lawyer. And she's still in school. It's not going to happen, right? So if you're a high-value male, like shit, if like me, let's just say my for my example, I pull 60 hours and I work nights at the hospital. I then come home and I typically trade between like 11, I mean, uh, between when the market was at 930 and I'll typically fall asleep by about 11 o'clock. I'll go to bed and I'll be like, I'll just let everything ride and pray for the best. <laughs> and hopefully the market doesn't crash while I'm sleeping and then wake up, you know, ready to go to the hospital at five o'clock. Or maybe I'll wake up a little bit earlier, catch the last 15 minutes of the market to see where, to see what's going on and then snooze for another hour. For me, like, I just don't see it. I just don't, I just don't see it. Like the type of woman that you would have to be. And then on top of that, I have to put up with you going, doing your nine to five and going to school. It's just not going to happen. It's not worth it. I would never see you. So what's the point of being in a relationship with you? You just might as well just pump and dump and keep it moving and just have a rotation. If that's the case, you just get what you need when you got a little bit of free time and just keep it moving. It's just not going to happen. I don't see it just in just in my own personal life with the schedule that I lead for me to be able to sit here and even consider dating, let alone proposing to a woman who has her career of being a lawyer. The type of men that she's going to spend most of her time coming in contact with are going to be other high value men. So then you're going to have to compete not only for her time, but then for the attention that she's going to get at the workplace. Why would you even bother at that point? Especially because by the time she finishes, she's already going to be closer to the wall. By the time that she finishes, most of the men that she's going to come in contact with are going to be older men, uh, what are the partners, etc. They're going to be throwing money around and her eyes are going to be all lit up. Just to go and show you, if you actually go to this woman's uh, Instagram, because when I saw her, I was like, let's just check the receipts. Let's, I, so I, went to, I wanted to see what her Instagram looked like because she talks a good story here about the type of man that she got. When you go to her Instagram, she's got one picture. She has one picture of him and like 100,000 of selfies of her, all scantily clothed. I rest just basically case. to close out. One, I would say, stop co-signing for these females. And two, like when you actually, when I was actually looking through, because I was looking through his, um, you look through like the, the comment section and there's so many people that are just like, she fantastic. She the best thing since sliced bread. And it really goes to show you like most of the going their own way, sort of like you look at like, for example, like Better Bachelor or CGA. The truth is real. When they make the comments that most men are just one sloppy toppy away from running back to the plantation, it is so true. If you actually look at her channel, most of her videos are like a thousand, two hundred, like twelve hundred, two thousand, two thousand views. And then of course she put out this video that got her like seventy two thousand. And then she went and put out another one, and then she put out another video that was nowhere near this. For me. It just looks more like chasing clout than anything. For me, like just look, just looking at her channel, this looks just more like clout chasing um, than anything to for her for her YouTube and for her Instagram. Because of course, people will then go over because she got she got clout here, right? From for mediocre tutorials, right? Because mediocre tutorials, he's got a, a huge a huge a huge base of viewers, and so all this does is just people just chasing clout. In my opinion, in my opinion. I'm just going to, I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to leave it there. I'm, I was surprised. I, I, I was actually thinking there was going to be more of a, like, a, you know, digging into the, to some of these receipts and to see people just basically co-signing, co-signing off on some, on, on this female. It's like, we are still lost for people who are thinking we won and the pandemic has brought us closer to, to winning and bringing, bringing masculinity back. It's like, no, not even close.